Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Bob DeMarco. And I'm Jim Person from theknifejunkie.com. And this week, we're doing something a little different. I am... And I'm scared. <laughs> I'm getting Jim, the knife newbie, That's right. to accept one of six knives I've brought for his consideration. Mm. I want him to carry it for, well, let's say a month. Oh, and yeah. then I w- wow, okay. Yeah. And then I want to see what you come back with. Tell me, tell okay. me what you think. All right. Before we get into the guts of this show, yeah. let me ask you, are you carrying anything different? Anything other than the Victorinox Tinker today? No, Bob, you know me. Uh, uh, my Swiss Army knife is what I carry. Okay. So well, only knife, that, only knife in my collection. <laughs> that's not true. A couple that's, of years ago, I gave you that little that tiny is true. And cold I have steel on, recon and one. I have it on my dresser. Well, uh, today in my pocket, I have the Spiderco Spidey Chef, which, uh, is a really, um, I think it's a very beautiful knife. That's why I bought it initially. This is a, a knife that, uh, it's a pocket knife that's got a lot of sweeping curves similar to a Santoku kitchen knife. And uh, it's sort of marketed as a pocket kitchen knife. And I, I took it at its word when I first got it. I only ever used it to cut onions and garlic hmm. and, and small precise stuff. It does great for that. But since I've uh, I've added this little leather fob and I, mm-hmm. I now carry it and, and it's great for EDC. Uh, and if you listen to our last podcast where we talk about different uh, collecting angles, mm-hmm. this is not only a knife that I bought because of its aesthetic beauty, but also this is designed by Marcin Slisch, a, a Polish designer whose knives I could never afford uh, if they weren't being manufactured, some of them by Spyderco. So mm, okay. another another good reason to have this knife. All right. And then in my front left pocket, I have the Great Eastern Cutlery number 38 from their 2017 run of single bladed 38s. Right. It's got a, uh, it's got a clip point blade, but it's a, like a California clip point blade. It, it also has a different name that escapes me now, but I love the graceful shape of this knife. Yeah. And it's also got these beautiful brown Bocote wood mm-hmm. um, handles that All just right. quite fetch it. And I know we've talked about the GEC 14 and 15. I know you've had some videos on that. Yep. To me, I don't have much proportion for scale right now. They seemingly are about the same size in my mind, but that's not true. Uh, it's No, it's not true at all. Actually, the 14 is is probably two-thirds the size of this wow, 38. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that oh. one's really diminutive. Too, but the 38 is not huge. No, it's not. No, none of these knives are huge. I would say this is mid, mid-range. mid This would be the smallest of steak knives if oh, I were to use right, it for that. Right. Okay. You could, you could flex it into that purpose. Yeah. Well, and then, then, as always, I have yeah. my, my pink cold steel yeah. broken I'll skull. Always carry, always carry three three knives, right? Yes, indeed. Yeah. Okay. Why get caught flat-footed? Yeah, and the cold steel is a, a favorite. Oh, it is. Yeah. yeah. Good show coming up. I'm a little scared, a little nervous about uh, picking a knife, but you're going to go through and kind of talk about the knives that you have in front of you, and we'll see what uh, what I choose. But uh, we'll start the show off with uh, Ships in the Night, where we're going to let you talk about a new knife in your collection, the Real Steel Metamorph. Mm-hmm. And it's then uh, we've got the Walk and Talk segment coming up oh, later yes. on in the show. We're so. going to test your ears with yeah. the Walk and Talk. Yeah. So stay tuned for that. Buy, sell, trade, buy again. Ships in the Night. The real steel metamorph is a first for me on a few fronts. It's my first real steel knife, it's my first front flipper, and it might be the first budget-minded, high-design knife to kick some heavy hitters out of my pocket. Temporarily, anyway. I've had my eye on the metamorph ever since its release. I'm drawn to its long, lean, graceful lines, its pointy, sort of worn footy blade, and, of course, the front flipper. But, admittedly, snobbery stopped me from pursuing this knife. I may have thought, if they release this knife in titanium with M390 and make it in the U.S., I'm all over it. But I'm glad I fought through my unearned snobbery and bought this damn thing, because it's quite sweet. I find its clean, simple design to be quite beautiful, if somewhat austere. A good look for a knife. The handle is completely neutral and accommodating to all grips, absolutely geared to EDC versatility. The Sandvik 14C28N blade is sharp and very thin, and slices paper with the best of them. I think it will make an outstanding steak knife. It has a generous run of jimping for your thumb in standard grip, and for purchase on the extended portion of the tang that forms the front flipper. Though I am not convinced that the front flipper is a passing fad, it does seem like a bit of a novelty, and that's really why I bought the real steel metamorph. I was concerned there would be a learning curve with actuation, but all it took was a few flips and I was used to it. The action is very smooth, 
the blade whips open with the thumb on deployment and falls shut under its minimal weight upon closing. As this is my first front flipper, I'm not sure how the metamorph compares to others in its class, but now that my interest is piqued, I intend to find out. In conclusion, I think I'll court a little bit of controversy here. I like this real steel metamorph better than, and find it a great alternative to, the Benchmade 940. I think the metamorph beats the 940 in looks, sliciness, and possibly fit and finish, given Benchmade's recent issues. Oh yeah, and it's about $100 less. Better than the 940? That's how good my first impressions are of the real steel metamorph. I know, I know. And now I know that I'm interested in front flippers as a collecting factor, and that if another design by Real Steel really resonates with me in the future, I will feel confident about spending my hard-earned dollars on it. How'd you like that upgrade on Ships in the Night? Now here's more of the Knife Junkie podcast. All right, Bob, talked a little bit about snobbery there with your your Real Steel metamorph. It plays into the collecting, yeah, yeah. snobbery, yes. Maybe another collect- another uh, category for your collection? Yeah, maybe yeah, so, yeah. a subcategory, a but, meta-category. Okay. Well, we talked about in last episode, episode five, we're going to use the Knife Junkies collection to talk about some of the reasons why folks uh, give a, col- uh, a knife collecting a try or some of the knives or styles that they like to collect and the reasons why. But we'd still like to hear from you if you have a particular knife, a brand of knife, a style of knife, a grind of knife, those d- different kind of things that interest you in collecting. Call the listener line at 724-466-4487 and let us know and let us know why you like collecting that particular type or style. Of knife. Another thing I would love to hear are your personal justifications for mm-hmm. buying knives that you don't need, that you right. know you don't need. Right. So yeah. let us know. Yeah. Well, I mean, be interesting could... to find out in the comments or on the listener line. And maybe that's the majority of reasons it would be more of a want than a need. I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Materialism. Yeah. But I guess I'm going to find out about uh, some of my wants, perhaps, coming up on this episode, which is a, kind of a scary one for me because, uh, as you labeled it, Jim picks a knife. So you're going to yes, put, put me under the, under. I was going to say under the gun here, but under the knife <laughs> to, to, to pick one out and start carrying Well, it. you're going to be walking out with one of these and carrying it for All two right. weeks. And All then right. you're going to let me know what you think about okay. it. Okay. And uh, why you like it, why you don't like it, okay. and then and then maybe what you want instead. Okay. Um, well, we'll we'll have a picture of these six knives that will accompany the blog post. So if you want to go to the knifejunkie dot com slash zero six, you can listen to the episode and see the pictures there, and then figure out what I uh, what I walked out in my pocket with, and then we'll we'll go from there. Okay, Jim. So so let me let me preface this all by saying the six knives I chose. Mm-hmm. Some of them are to be expected. Uh, i.e. common first EDC knives. And then others are, are, were randomly selected because they had certain features that I wanted you to consider. Okay. Okay. So in front of you, I have the, um, steel wheel cut jack. This is the, uh, the small, uh, version of this with the cheap plastic handle. It goes for about 25 bucks. I have the buck canoe with bone handles. This goes for about 18 bucks. I have the vaunted and much-loved Benchmade Mini Griptilian. This one has an aftermarket handle on it. We have the Boker Lateralis, the Real Steel Metamorph, and since I know you love blue, I brought in my uh, blue Spyderco Endura. Okay. So all of these uh, knives were chosen for certain aspects, certain qualities of their build and usage that I want you to consider. Um, the first one, this uh, Cold Steel Cut Jack. Okay. Has is small, has a light plastic handle. The whole thing is pretty light. Mm-hmm. And it has flipper deployment. You just press this down and the blade pops out. Oh, okay. And it's got uh, a locking mechanism, a liner lock, this thin piece of metal. All right. So I'm going to close it up. I'm going to give it to you. I want you to try flipping it, see what you think. Okay. So just hold the handle back like that. Yeah. I'd take the pen out of your hand. Take the pen out of my hand. Yep. Grip it. Yeah. Kind of hold on with your, uh, with your fingers on that clip. That, that kind of writes it, writes right, it in your hand. Right, right. And now just pull back on that tab. There you go. There you go. Oh, okay. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, no, it's fine. It's, it's a thing. Light. Yeah, it's, it's a thing. It's, it is light. Fits nicely in the hand. You've got jimping on that thumb ramp there. So if, right. you're, if you're doing any real cutting, I've used this to cut down quite a bit of cardboard. This oh, lives yeah. on my desk. Oh, okay. okay. And it is a great little kick-ass do-anything knife. Right. And then to get it closed. You so just... you see that little leaf of metal that is uh, backing up to the tang right by the flipper? Oh, yeah. Push that to the side with your thumb. Oh, okay. All right. See, that really interrupts the path of the knife. Oh, gotcha. So gotcha. You just move it out of the way. Okay. 
So well, this is your not a strong contender so far. Okay, all right. So this is a uh, this is a, um, a a liner lock flipper. So now this next knife is the only slip joint of the bunch, but I figured to give you a kind of a full representation of the common playing field, you should have a slip joint to try. I am a um, a sucker for for the canoe pattern. And this, what does the canoe pattern mean? It well, if you look at the handle, it's sort of shaped like a canoe. Hmm. It's okay. even on both sides, and it's got the the sort of swelling up at the bolster, kind of reminiscent of a canoe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but they also have a knife, uh, two blades, a, a large pen and a, and a small pen. Mm-hmm. Or I guess a large spear and a small pen coming out of opposite ends. Right, right, okay. And as you can see from that particular one you have in your hand, the, right. the larger blade has a harder pull mm-hmm. and uh, and very sharp. But it has a harder pull, therefore you will find more. It'll it'll feel more trusty in hand. Okay. The smaller blade, which you use probably less often, mm-hmm. has less of a stiff lockup. But if you're doing small tasks, you probably don't have to worry much about it. Right. Okay. It's yeah. got that attractive bone handle. I was going to say aesthetically, it's uh, in, in addition to the blue one. Uh-huh. This is probably the the nicest looking one, the one that kind of caught my eye first, just because of the aesthetics. It does have the, like I said, the the kind of the jigging on the the bone pattern, and then the gold. I don't know if we what you call them, the end caps or uh, those are called bolsters. Bolsters on the end, yeah. So now, if you look at that knife, that was a that was an eighteen dollar lunchtime purchase at Walmart. But I think the bone handles are beautiful. Yeah, yeah, really nice looking knife. Okay, next is the very extremely popular Benchmade Mini Griptilian. Named Griptilian after the handle, which I have since removed, and uh, which has knurling and jimping all over it. It's like mm. you can't let go of it. It's so grippy. But it has a really cheap and light feel, so I, I opted to get this aftermarket aluminum scale for it. But the important huh. thing about this mm. is the locking mechanism. See that? Mm-hmm. So the important thing about the Benchmade is the axis lock. That's what this lock is called. See this this button on the side? Mm-hmm. It makes it truly ambidextrous because you can put the clip on either side. You can open up the knife from either side with the thumb studs, and you can close it equally easy from either side by pulling back these, oh, this thanks. bar that interrupts the tang. Gotcha. Okay, so the lockup on this is really excellent, and the fidget factor on this is huge. You just hold the lock open, the blade flies open, you can flick it open, close it. I mean, this is this will annoy your wife. If she's if she's getting on you about something, Jim, you might consider this one. Just start flicking the knife at her. Give it a try. Yeah. Tell me what you think of how that handle feels. First impression is a whole lot heavier okay. than the first two you gave me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not quite sure that the weight of it in my pocket is going to be something I want to have to carry every day. Gotcha. I mean, that's first impression. Sure. Just Just the weight. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, when I got that knife, it was substantially lighter because of the plastic handle. Uh, I bought that aftermarket uh, AWS, that's Applied Weapons Technology, I think. Mm-hmm. They're, they're guys who make uh, stocks for rifles and stuff, but they uh, they made these uh, pull back on the axis lock there. See if you can get that to shut. Uh, no? <laughs> I'll just let you have it, yeah. <laughs> okay, so... So, folks, he is not going to be taking the no, <laughs> bench-made no, no, rig- I'm take that one. Yeah. I mean, you can also... Oh, I see. Yeah, I two see. handily. You don't have to be a hot dog about it. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm be curious to see what the original handle felt like, but yeah, mm-hmm. but too too heavy for me for an everyday carry. So, tell me what you think about this handle in hand, though. Uh, it's nice. I mean, fits fits nicely in the hand. I like it. See, I, I like it, but I have I like it less than I used to. I'm I'm finding it very square. And I use this um, mm, yeah. mini grip tilling and also kind of like the cut jack. It's kind of a desk knife. I do it for a certain kind of rough cutting that I don't mind if I get a little nick in the blade. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> so I'll flick that open? <laughs> yeah. But those scales are a little squared off for hard. So, yeah, pull it back. Yeah, right, right, go. right. Okay. I don't know. You yeah. might be falling for yeah. it. Not bad. Okay, so the next <laughs> I brought uh, because it highlights the locking. This is a, it's a flipper like the first one, this uh-huh. cut jack, but this Boker lateralis is, is on a ball bearing pivot. So on either side of the blade, between the blade and the handle is a washer impregnated with ball bearings. So the action is super smooth. See how I, I take the lock away and it just falls shut. Uh-huh. That's, that's the sign that you have a well dialed in and very smooth action. Uh-huh. The other reason I brought this is that it is a frame lock. So the the lock, this locking leaf that interrupts the tang and stops it from moving, 
is actually a whole part of the side of the handle. It's not a liner, like in this knife, where it's a little mm. piece of metal on the inside keeping gotcha. it rigid. Right. It is the whole side of the knife, wow. is the lock. And that was an invention of Chris Reeve, of the Chris Reeve knives. And when you have this in hand and you're gripping it, your grip is re reinforcing this lockup. Oh, okay. So there's no way this is going to open up in your hand. So this is considered a very strong lockup. And you close it the same way you close the cut jack. You just move that piece of metal that's interrupting the tang to the side here. Oh, okay. So you move that to the side. Okay. Uh, this one is actually even heavier than the last one. Yes, it is. <laughs> and quite quite a bit bigger, too. Yeah. You think that's too big for your everyday carry needs? For me, I think it is. Um, well, you know, needs or wants. <laughs> <laughs> right. Your everyday carry needs. I mean, I mean how, how many needs do I have? You know, I, I think anything would be big in comparison to my Swiss Army knife uh, that for is... the most part. So that's something I need to consider. But I think the uh, the buck uh, so far is still the still winning. still winning just because of the size, weight, and I, I still go back to aesthetics for me. Okay. Okay. Really, really, really pretty knife. So this is one reason why I actually bought this poker lateralis. Yeah. To me, this is a very pretty knife. No, I agree. I it agree. looks like an art deco piece yes. of art. Yeah. To me. It's very, very nice looking. Uh, you know, uh, like you said, art deco. I like the, the style, that type of thing. If I was to, to buy and collect, that'd probably be one I would put on the shelf or put in the collection, you know, just to I don't think it would be a carry for me. It might look a little murdery, mm. right? Yeah. A little, just a little bit for yeah. no, nah, maybe not. Well, maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe it's just pure class. Yeah, yeah. I like this knife, and and one of the one of the heft issues with this is that it's not titanium; it's steel. So uh, a titanium frame lock, just like this, mm. with titanium on both sides, is going to be much lighter than oh, this. Oh, okay. So this is steel. They went to great lengths to mill out pockets inside the handle oh, yeah. so that uh, it would be lighter. But still, it's steel. Right. Steel is heavier. Right. Okay. So let's move on to this next one. This okay. is unique, and, and uh, you heard me talk about this knife. Right. This, uh, is, the, this is the real steel metamorph. Metamorph, that's right. Now, this is a new knife to me, so I hope you don't pick it because uh, <laughs> I want to carry it. <laughs> but, all right, all right. But I've, I've, I've made my bed, so I have to lie in it. So the unique thing about this knife, it's all metal. Feel how light it is. Oh, yeah, wow. So that it's aluminum. Light. Yeah, that is light. Aluminum is lighter. Okay. Obviously, lighter than steel, and uh, sometimes it's lighter than titanium. Uh, this knife... I bought because it has this very unique opening system. This is a kind of newish uh, trend in modern knives, and it's called a front flipper. And you see the tang of the blade is extended beyond the handle All right. so that there's a little tab uh -huh. sitting out proud, and it's jimped so you can grab it with your thumb and open it. Oh, flip it up in that way. Yeah, front flipper. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but... I'm getting there. Mm -hmm. I use a little wrist, and it comes out easily. But this is on ball bearings also, so it falls shut, and that blade is light. So if it falls shut under its own weight and it's a light blade, that that means the action is smoking. Sweet, because there's no blade play here either. There's no slop or wiggle. Mm. So um, I'm a little excited about this knife yeah. because it's uh, it's new to me. But, right, right. And it's got right. some of these features. Right. That, okay. So that's also the same kind of lock. Yep, there you go. So in my uh, Ships in the Night read about this, I mentioned how I like it better than the Benchmade 940. Mm. Jim, I realize you're not quite familiar with that blade, but right. that's one of those knives that people get very emotional about. You, you call that knife uh, inadequate and people will freak. Mm. It, of course, is not inadequate, but I think it's, I think it's highly overrated, at least in its design. Ooh. I, I do. I know. I know. Ooh, such controversial opinions. Right. But you heard it here first. <laughs> I think downright. I think it's ugly. I gotta say. And I think the uh, the thumb ramp. Well, whatever. I'll get into the nine forty another time. But yeah. I do think that this metamorph at half the price or less is is kind of in the same class. Mm. And I think it beats it personally. Okay. Right. But I, I can't wait to hear what people think. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, call the listener line, 724-466-4487. Let the knife junkie know what you think. Yeah, give him a piece of his mind. That's right. A polite piece of his right. mind. Right. So the, the final, number six. Okay, so the final one is a lockback, and this is a is a Spyderco. This is a Spyderco Endura. As you can see, this is a full-size knife. This is almost a four-inch blade. It's like 3.85, I believe. And uh, it's fully flat ground, which, as you may remember from a past podcast, that means the grind starts all the way at the spine, uh, headed towards the edge in a wedging kind of shape. 
But since the grind goes all the way to the spine, that is a very shallow wedge and will have incredible shearing power. Hmm. So uh, this is a great knife. It's very light. It's blue. I know you like blue. Mm -hmm. And it's got a lock back, which is the most familiar of locks, I believe. Um, uh, Let me see what you think. Okay. And um, Spyderco, do all Spydercos have the hole? They all have the holes. Okay. And there are some models, like fixed blades and some... um, more special uh, special designs by Spyderco that have the hole, but it's small. It's just a signature hole. It's uh, not okay. even a usable thing. So okay. that is definitely their trademark. And for a long time, I'm not sure if this is still the case, but for a long time, if you want a round hole on your blade, you pay Spyderco their pound of flesh. You yeah. know, it's a... Uh, it's a trademark kind yeah, of thing. Trademark yeah, trademark yeah. yeah, exactly. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. I like this one. That that knife that you're holding in your hand is one that I use when I'm doing projects in the house. Mm. That always comes out when I'm painting a room. For some reason, I really like that for cutting tape, and um, it's just real easy to use, mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. sharp, and it dulls. You know, it's VG10 steel, which is a mid-grade non-powder uh, metallurgy steel, so it, it dulls somewhat quickly, mm. but it sharpens up like a razor very right. quickly. Right. So this is the Spyderco Endura? Endura. Endura, that you said. And it will Endura a lot of stuff. Right, right. Yeah, I like it, yeah. 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 I would probably, I I think the reason I like it is the the thumb. The back lock. Yeah, the back lock is more, it's it's back on the back of the handle, about midway down, which to me, being a knife newbie, not a, you know, someone that handles knives all the time, it's easier for me to use than the, than the, Kind of the locking mechanism up there or this kind of little side push kind of thing. In the path of the blade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was not quite as comfortable. But yeah, I like, I, I like this one. I still think probably, even though, well, it's actually lighter than the Buck Canoe, right? Oh, interesting. Yeah, it, this, feel, it feels a little lighter. This Endura, which is much larger than the Buck Canoe. It, it's larger, <laughs> yeah, uh, and lighter. But I still, um, maybe it's because of the Swiss Army that I'm carrying. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's... I don't know. You're yeah, tending I'm towards the buck. Tending toward the buck, but now that I have him in my hand, the buck is uh, substantially heavier, yeah. or it feels like it is, heavier than the uh, the spider co. Here's something to take into although, account, Jim. Although it is smaller. Here's yeah. something to take into account. All right. When you're, you're not going to stop carrying your Swiss Army knife, I assume. Well, I don't want to carry two knives in my pocket. I don't well, that would just be crazy. I, I don't want to be weighted <laughs> down. <laughs> okay. So one thing to take into consideration with this buck knife is that it is going to, it is a little bit heavy and it is going to ride sideways in your pocket. Hmm. It will drop to the bottom of your pocket and it won't stand up like, like a good boy north to south where it's comfortable. It will drop and it will be horizontal on the front of your leg. Right. Like a little, like a mini boat anchor in there. This Spyderco Endura has this pocket clip. Oh. So it will it will be weightlessly at the top of your pocket oh, okay. or in the waistband or wherever you prefer to clip it. Okay. But the clip really helps it from rattling around and becoming a nuisance in your pocket. Oh, okay, because so, it, is, it is substantially longer. Yes. Well, not substantially. It's it's an inch or so longer. Yeah. Okay. Well, do I have to decide right now? You or do. do we, I, think, I think that's the whole purpose of this podcast today. I think well, you I was going to say maybe I decide and we'll let people know on the next one, but. Uh-huh. Okay. If okay. You well, me, if you want me to decide right now, I think you should decide. All right. Um, just because it's closer in size to what I'm carrying right now, I think I'm going to go with the buck canoe. Okay, Jim. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I made my, my decision. <laughs> Yeah. So. All right. Well, well. Next time, I'm I'm going to only give you the option to step out of your comfort zone. Yeah. But, but since this is the first time, right? We're gonna go easy. On I, I like that, and I I can see the the spider co endura coming coming into my pocket maybe sooner than later. And plus, Jim, and this is not a diss to Buck Knives, but if you love that little canoe, who knows? There might be a, a case or a GEC in your future. Oh, okay. Well, I've seen the uh, the GEC, I think fourteen review that you did mm-hmm. on the on the on the website, and, yep. and you opened it with your fifteen, I believe. I so, did indeed. Yeah. <laughs> so, folks uh, haven't seen that or any of the other uh, video reviews that you do, or what's in your pocket videos, those kind of things. They can go to the uh, the knifejunkie dot com slash YouTube and catch all of your uh, your videos there. Yep, yep. They they come up as they come out. Yeah. <laughs> That's all, all I right. say about that. So I've got a new knife to carry for a few weeks. All and, right. Uh, keep listening to the uh, Knife Junkie podcast and see my reaction or hear my reaction, and we'll we'll kind of go from there. Now, before we close this out, Jim, I want you to know that I'm giving it to you super sharp, but you can dull it down 
This is 420HC steel, so that it, it can't take a lot of abuse before it dulls. But, um, you know, when you get a knife from me, whether it's a knife I've made or a knife I give you, uh, you have lifetime sharpening services. I want you to know that. And uh, also, I want you to use this for things you aren't even thinking of. Lunch, cut your sandwich. Well, I know you're not eating sandwiches. Cut your chicken with it. Right. You know, pull it out and, and see what it's like. And uh, don't worry if it gets dirty or it gets gummed up, I'll, I'll clean so it So not only is it sharp, you're giving it to me clean so I can cut my chicken with it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's okay. sharp and it's clean. Okay. So, uh, yeah, use it don't and use uh, it. let me know what you think. Yeah. But we'll inter- get a review from you. Yeah. And one interesting point I want to mention before we close this out, all six of these knives you gave me are great first-time knives or early-on collectible knives. But again, I think you mentioned the price point, all under $25 or so? Oh, negative. Actually not. Uh, oh, okay. They span from this knife, which is the, the Benchmade Mini Griptilian. This is about 100 bucks. Oh, wow. Okay. And they go all the way down to this Cut Jack, which is which I paid 21 bucks okay. for. Okay. Well, I, th- I thought I heard a couple of them were in that $20, $25 range, so I'm sorry I misspoke. But if you're interested in any of these knives, you can go to Amazon.TheKnifeJunkie.com and find them there. Or, uh, again, call the listener line, 724-466-4487, and let us know which of these you would have chosen instead of the one I did. It's time now for the Knife Junkies Walk and Talk segment, where you try to identify the knife by the sound it makes. Okay, so for this week's Walk and Talk, we have a knife that can only be opened in one fashion, and I'm going to do it now. So take a listen to that sound. This is it closing. But listen to this open. That was it closing. Here it is opening again. So this knife, just to remind you, has only one way of opening it. Unlike other knives that have several ways, this is only coming open in one fashion. So what do you think this knife is? So if you think you know what this knife is from its walk and talk, from its sound opening and closing, leave a comment, call the listener line, let us know what you think it is, and we will come back on in a future episode. And if you got it right, and if we like it, we'll put you on the air. Think you know what that knife was? Then call the 24-7 Knife Junkie listener line at 724-466-4487 or email the Knife Junkie at bob at the com and let us know. All right, don't forget, call the listener line at 724-466-4487 if you know what knife Bob was talking about in that walk and talk segment. And don't forget, uh, we're on uh, our early episodes here of the Knife Junkie podcast. We had our first walk and talk back in episode number one, and we're still waiting for a correct call. So 724-466-4487 if you know what that knife was in episode one or this knife in episode six. Please call the listener line and uh, let us know and uh, tell us uh, what knife that was. But also, if you like that knife or don't like that knife or have any thoughts about it, we'd love to uh, share with other listeners on the Knife Junkie podcast. So, Bob, an interesting episode today. I'm walking out here with a a new knife. Indeed, Jim. Now, is it it mine to keep or just test drive? Well, we'll see how much you like. Okay. All right. But uh, I just I just wanted to uh, find out from you this time uh, some closing words. I mean, you just picked one knife out of six to carry for two weeks right. every day. So what were some of the deciding factors that went into it? Um, aesthetics, which we talked about in the show today. Yeah. Uh, certain knives you, you like or you collect just because of the look. Uh, to me, this is a, a nice looking knife with the, uh, with the bone And jigging. you chose you chose the buck canoe. Buck canoe, yeah. yeah. Uh, what the jigging, the kind of the bone handle, the bolsters, uh, is that yeah. what you call them? The yep. gold, gold end caps or bolsters on the end. I like that. Uh, to me, it's just a, it's a, it's an easy knife to open and close. And I liked it because of its size. It's smaller in length, only two and a half inches, perhaps. Um, I'm kind of used to carrying that size knife with the Swiss Army. So I think that's, it's more familiar for me. So I think that's some of the reasons why I went with this one. Well, I will be interested to see after two weeks of carrying this in your mm-hmm, pocket, mm-hmm. how, how you find it carries different from your Victorinox. Right. And also, um, if, if after carrying this knife around for two weeks, loose in your pocket, if you will find, uh, a possible need for a pocket clip in the future. Yeah. I'm curious about that. That'll be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm the knife newbie. I'm on my way to becoming a knife junkie. It may take us a while to get there, but that's okay. We've got plenty of that's episodes. Right, <laughs> Steal yourself, Jim. Oh, Steal yourself. That must be an inside joke somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> 
as we have to do, I'm going to give you, give you the final word. Uh, all I got to say, Jim, is when you're uh, selecting your knife, make sure that you always are kind to yourself and you get something that is going to resonate with your soul. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. 